Greetings. Good morning from the East Coast of the United States. It's early here, just after sunup, and I wanted to return to vlogging by speaking to the possibilities of Trump administration for higher education. Now, this is something that I've been writing about for quite some time. Uh, I've hosted a series of Future Trends Forum scenario workshops on this. Uh, I have a whole bunch of blog posts, which you can uh, see. Uh, and today I'd like to just sum this up in video. Uh, obviously, uh, the most prominent feature of the Trump administration of higher education is the appointment of uh, Lindsay McMahon to be the Department of Education Secretary. Uh, this awaits confirmation and that whole process. Uh, but I think she alone points to some interesting possibilities. Uh, her background is mostly administrative in terms of running a foundation and uh, being um, uh, an operating officer for the uh, professional wrestling organization. So this could point to her being pushed to dismantle the Department of Education, either entirely to wrapping it up and breaking it up and distributing its functions elsewhere, or to doing a light version of that by taking some of its functions and distributing them to other federal uh, offices and agencies and or to privatize some of it uh, that remains to be seen she doesn't have a lot of education background so she doesn't have a lot that we can draw upon and there's an open question if Trump will actually care enough about higher education and education as a whole to push her to take major steps um, let me summarize some of the findings that uh, I've been coming to over the past year um, sharpened and honed by what we've seen uh, since the election. Uh, as I mentioned before, the perhaps the largest uh, or the most prominent form of this is the question of what to do with the Department of Education. The Republican Party has for decades wanted to uh, break it up and end it. Uh, they want to, uh, as I said before, to privatize some of it, such as student loans, but also take some of its functions and move them to other offices. Now, in terms of the impact on higher education, this has several different points. Uh, one is that this might make student loans more predatory uh, and harder to discharge. There will certainly be an end to the Biden administration's efforts to forgive some student loans. Uh, this also could mean more administrative overhead for colleges and universities to the extent that they work with the federal government uh, on regulatory compliance and other issues. So this is one one major topic that uh, can impact us. Now, Trump has also vowed to end DEI and woke efforts in the federal government, and this can have all kinds of implications depending on how they are actually implemented. Uh, for example, uh, reducing the Department of Education uh, protections or guidelines to protect students, such as uh, sexual minorities or ethnic minorities. Um, there may also be the big push to force changes to the accreditation system. Uh, this is something that Trump spoke to last year. Uh, this is something that we've seen in the state of Florida, which uh, has required Florida's colleges and universities to cycle through creditors. Uh, at the very least, this represents a major administrative headache for higher education having to not just go through accreditation, but to change it up every 10 years or perhaps more frequently. Um, but it also uh, could be a way to force some kind of anti-DEI ideology through accreditors. Um, and in that case, we might see some impact in terms of curriculum, hiring, staffing, strategy, and, and colleges and universities. Um, now, there are other options, too, for uh, what the federal government might do. Uh, for example, the Department of Labor. Uh, which uh, is an enormous department which a, with a lot of different uh, connections to higher education, that could stop requiring uh, a college degree for its positions, and pushing that might have ripple effects in other states and other agencies uh, in an effort to uh, remove the paper ceiling, as some have said. Um, we could also see the Department of Labor encouraging apprenticeships. Um, this is a long long-running desire in parts of America, and that could compete with college and university study. Uh, we could see other implications as well, uh, but 
a more significant one for some colleges and universities might be going after the finances of colleges and universities. Now, there are a few ways this can be done, um, but we've seen hints of this from J.D. Vance, who has referred several times to uh, Viktor Orban in Hungary going after some universities in that country. Uh, I've got a couple of quotes here that are relevant. Quote, I think Orban's way has to be the model for us, not to eliminate universities, but to give the choice between survival and taking a much less biased approach to teaching, unquote. Uh, quote, whether it's the incentives you put into place, funding decisions that are made, and the curricula that are developed, you can really use politics to influence culture, unquote. So you could see a Trump administration trying to force or influence changes in higher education curricula, uh, and you can imagine that having ripple effects of, say, for example, state governments, depending on the state, wanting to follow that line, uh, other political figures, funders, uh, and foundations. Now, this is something which uh, might play out in a symbolic level. So you could see, for example, colleges and universities responding by changing the names of certain classes, uh, by keeping the curriculum intact, uh, or it might take a more direct route, such as naming and shaming individual faculty. And this could lead to a chilling effect for all kinds of uh, gender-based and race-based uh, pedagogy and curricula. Now, another a possible angle has to do with uh, academic protests. We've seen uh, the Trump campaign and a lot of Republicans strongly opposed to Gaza protests. Uh, so we might see a new um, Trump administration go after economic protests, either current protests, uh, to the extent to which we actually see academic protests against the Trump administration is an open question, or historical ones investigating how colleges and universities responded to Gaza protests. So we could see Title IX investigations. We could see if there's a live protest, uh, Trump encouraging state governments to call up the National Guard or even more strongly using federal troops. I think looking further downstream, the extent to which the Trump administration does these kind of things might inspire more academic resistance and protests, which then might encourage Trump even further given that he can't stand disagreement or resistance. Um, Another thing to think about is what happens to international education. Uh, international education is, of course, very, very important to American higher education. We have many colleges and universities that rely on international students for a chunk of their enrollment as well as for their funding. Uh, we also see colleges and universities uh, recruiting international students uh, for other reasons, including uh, trying to make their campuses more global as well as trying to diversify their population. Well, we could see this we could see the Trump administration reacting to this in, some, uh, in a few different ways. Um, one of the largest is that we've seen in some previous documents, such as the uh, uh, Project 2025 book, as well as the Agenda 2047 um, platform, which asks for colleges and universities to deport supporters or radicals. It also asks them to try to reduce connections to American adversaries. In that case, that means China. So that means reducing the number of Chinese students, especially in certain fields which might be seen as compromising American security, such as AI or bioinformatics. Um, we could see various agencies in the federal government putting pressure on higher education for this, such as the Department of Defense, Department of State, Justice, or Commerce. We could see intelligence agencies putting pressure, as well as the military. And don't forget that the military has presences on different campuses in the form of uh, training, uh, such as ROTC. Um, uh, we could also see um, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, um, doing raids on campuses, say, for example, to deport uh, Palestinian students. Um, all of this, again, can lead to campus resistance, which could then accelerate Trump's pressure. Now, think I, I mentioned before teaching and learning, but I want to turn to research because this is, after all, one of the key functions of universities and colleges. Uh, and we could see a new Trump administration putting pressure on campus in order to change their research. So we could see pressure on social science and humanities programs that are working on certain topics that Trump might arrogate under the header of woke or DEI, such as uh, racism, gender studies, ethnic studies, and climate change. Uh, and this pressure could take place in forms of, of ending federal grants or federal support. 
but also you could use a bully pulpit to encourage popular attacks on um, people doing this work. We saw from uh, Springfield, Ohio, when Trump and J.D. Vance went after immigrants uh, putatively eating pets, which they didn't, but also encouraging uh, action and animus towards uh, and immigrants in that town, which led to at least one university going online um, to avoid uh, security challenges for face-to-face -face instruction. We could see something like this happen if Trump on uh, Truth Social calls out a given university. We could see uh, popular uh, rage directed at it with all kinds of implications, including physical violence. Now, the I've been fascinated by enrollment uh, for decades, and I'm really curious to see how the Trump administration might change that. Um, if the Trump administration successfully manages to push campuses to reduce their amount of affirmative action enrollment policy, we could see black, Latino, Native American student numbers decline. Um, there are a lot of ways of doing this, uh, including federal policies, encouraging state governments, um, but also on the, if you will, the supply or pipeline side. If the Trump administration goes after K through 12 and makes life harder for black, Latino, and other represented minority students in K through 12, we could see fewer uh, Grad, high school graduates appear from those populations, fewer of them apply to colleges and universities. So downstream, we might see a reduction of those numbers in enrollment. Now, one aspect of the Trump administration that I follow that I haven't heard anybody else talk about um, is the possibility of launching new institutions. Um, Agenda 47, this is the Trump uh, platform, um, called for uh, creating online institutions. And here's one quote. To reduce the cost of higher education, Republicans will support the creation of additional, drastically more affordable alternatives to a traditional four-year college degree. So that might mean we see entrepreneurs kicking off new, uh, new online institutions like Western Governors uh, University, for example. It could see an increase in for-profit higher education. We saw that happen under the first Trump administration. Um, Project 2025 is very interesting on this. They call for launching other higher education entities, including a Space Force Academy uh, to serve the newly launched Space Force, and also a school for financial warfare uh, to be built by commerce and defense. So we might see Trump push for new institutions. Um, I'm, I'm also generally concerned about what the what Trump might do with his bully pulpit. Obviously, he's someone who loves the limelight. He likes to uh, express himself in all kinds of media, from Fox News to his own uh, social media platform. And he could really encourage people to go after higher education in all kinds of different ways. Uh, for example, he could uh, encourage people to go after accreditors. Now, this is really dark matter in higher education. Almost nobody outside of higher education knows accreditors exist. But imagine naming and shaming some of these organizations and accreditors. Um, we could see the Department of Justice filing cases against uh, schools um, that uh, the Trump administration thinks are coddling Gaza protesters or pushing uh, DEI or uh, gender ideology and, and so on. Um, those cases might have an impact, but they also might inspire state governments to go after uh, their colleges and universities and might also inspire popular unrest, again, thinking about online threats or physical threats. Um, now, uh, in 2023, Trump uh, vowed to go after uh, endowments, and uh, there are a couple of ways this can be done. One would be to push a, a, a new tax law, um, and it's, I mean, it'd be pretty easy to write in order to, say, uh, tax heavily any endowment over a certain threshold, say, $50 million. Um, we could see this happen. Uh, we could also see, uh, Trump mentioned using the Congressional Budget Reconciliation process uh, to fine uh, universities for, as he put it, reverse discrimination. Uh, so we could see other financial attacks happening, again, in this, on this social level. But everything I've been talking about is direct impacts, you know, direct things that the Trump administration could do. But there are also secondary impacts um, where other actions that the Trump administration would take uh, outside of higher education could then rebound. Uh, so one of them might impact uh, in enrollment. That is, if the Trump administration pushes hard for uh, deporting 
um, uh, uh, immigrants to the United States or if he pushes another Muslim ban or some other form of restricting the flow of population to the U.S., we could see international student numbers uh, reduce. We could also see uh, unrest on campuses. I, I forecast this back in 2016 and we didn't see it happen in the first Trump administration, but he seems more determined this time. So the idea is that imagine uh, Trump administration's ICE goes uh, to a college or university and says, please give us information about undocumented migrants on your campus. How does a university respond? I, I mean that both strategically, but also tactically. Do we get, for example, IT department staff say they're not going to hand over that data? Do we see faculty staff and or students form human chains to, uh, to block a campus in case ICE uh, agents actually try to enter the physical grounds? Um, we could see that really spill over into some uh, really challenging ways. Um, my friend uh, Don Shawless pointed out that um, we could see uh, campus finances taking a hit uh, with international student numbers uh, falling down. Um, I recommend Don's uh, Higher Education Inquirer, by the way. Um, another thing to think about is uh, how the tariffs that the Trump administration proposes against other nations, especially China, might impact higher education. Most of the economists that I've read suggest that, they, or just openly argue, that such tariffs are bad for the American economy. So think about what that might do to state budgets for public higher education. We could also see inflation result, uh, and of course that can just devour uh, our budgets. So we could see all kinds of awful financial cr um, uh, pressures there. On another economic front, on a labor front, uh, we should expect the Trump administration to be very anti-union. Uh, the National Labor Relations Board will probably be staffed with people who are very anti-union. So we have to wonder what impact that might have on pre-existing faculty and staff uh, unions across the country, as well as if that might chill out uh, organizing, especially for adjuncts and graduate students. Uh, a couple other issues that really come to mind here is if Robert F. Kennedy actually takes office and does horrible things to public health, we might just, just see the, pub, the health of our students, faculty, and staff as well as our communities degrade. Uh, so think, for example, about the spread of new diseases or weakening immune systems. Uh, that hits us really directly. Um, there's also the fact that Trump has this habit of just going after uh, racial and uh, gender minorities verbally and textually, so we have to plan for that impact on our populations as we go. Um, all of these, I, I hate to say all of these are contingent or all of these vary, um, but it's, it's hard to pin some of these down because so much depends on what Trump actually decides to pay attention to. A lot of it depends on what Fox News is telling him about, a lot of it depends on what he feels like paying attention to. He's not a very programmatic president, and his new Department of Education secretary proposed is not someone who clearly has an agenda that we can break down in this kind of detail. But I want to make sure that our audience knows all these possibilities and can be planning and thinking about how to respond to them. I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to change my tone here. I've been very analytical. Um, it's also very early in the morning, but um, this is potentially terrifying. Um, this is potentially an existential threat to quite a few programs, as possibly colleges and universities. This represents a humanitarian threat to our populations. This is potentially a very, very dark four years. Um, I hope I can help. I hope my work can be of use to academics, academically adjacent people, to help them prepare for this and, and, and go through it in the best way possible. I wish everybody in academia the very best. Good luck, and um, I hope we can get through this together. Thank you for listening and watching.